Hello folks, and welcome once again to Let's Play Skyrim. Last time, I had arrived at Alftand, ready to progress the Elder Knowledge quest, and I realized there's a little side area that I need to explore before entering the main cave, so... I see. Let's do Become Ethereal will save us from fall damage. As long as we're ethereal, we can't hurt anything. So we can leave the bear alone and just head into the Alftand Ruined Tower. I was going to say, I do believe we've got stuff to kill in here. Not a lot, but some. So two paths, that one's a dead end. We head in here. There's a silver ore on the ground. A gate that we can't open from here, but that will open when we push that button. A uh, spell tome of Lesser Ward. Well, I didn't realize that was in here. That's pretty cool. Apprentice Locked Chest. Some decent stuff there, albeit nothing I actually care about. Lots of pressure plate traps here, so just be on alert as you sneak through. I'm not even sure how that one got pressed. But in the end, doesn't matter. We've killed the Sphere Guardian. I believe that's it combat-wise. So let's just snake back through here. Got a few ingots, a few other cool things. We can hit that button to activate the many and varied traps on that side, which is kind of fun. There's a spider with nothing I need. There's an expert locked chest. Just some gold. Dresser. Oh, it's got gold in it. Let's grab the gold. I'm gonna say, well, we got at least one spider. Something else is aware of us. Another spider. No problem. Nice and easy. There's an adept locked chest hiding under these shelves. Let's make sure we grab that. Or at least search it. Those are arrows. I do like to pick up arrows. There are a few quivers of them in here. So that's collapsed. A dead end. Let's make our way through here. Looks like we're rolling up on the top of the tower now, such as it is. We got a few more arrows. A few more arrows. Always welcome. And an exit back to Skyrim. And we're just right up here at the top. I could... try to finagle some shortcut over to the... fissure that'll take us back into the main... dungeon, but... let's well, not. Just didn't want to leave any content. Gotta explore that ruined tower cell. Wouldn't be proper completionists if we left anything undone. I don't know how that copy of Ancestors in the Dunmer wound up way over here, but... I'm gonna choose not to worry too much about it. A Little bit of fall damage won't hurt. And now we're back where we started. Except, the ruined tower is explored. So we're here for the Elder Knowledge Quest. Recover the Elder Scroll. 
And we're also here on Discerning the Transmundane to transcribe the lexicon. We're also here on Seeking Disclosure, Find the Elder Scroll Dragon. So we're taking care of three quests right now by making our way f here through Alftand, the final of the big three Dwarven Ruins in the base game Skyrim. So this is Sulla's journal. Remember we found the Expedition Manifest? There are seven people we're expecting to find. Sulla is the leader. We tried to get through Glacier at the top, but we couldn't find any way into that tower parapet. Yag spotted in the glacial wall and construction of a catwalk was finished just in time for a storm to hit. At first we thought to wait it out, but it has only gotten worse. A shift in the glacier took out several of the new laborers. I, al I ordered everyone to quickly move as much of the supplies as we could into the fissure, and we managed to get most of it. One of the hands decided he wasn't going to listen and tried to make it out through the storm, but got blown off the catwalk by the wind. Looks like we are well and truly stuck in here. But for all that, I feel even more driven that I should be the one to uncover the mysteries of this ruin. I'm tired of all the credit for my work going to the mages or the legion. It will be my name that goes down in the history books for this discovery. Alrighty. Well, we know how that's worked out for other expeditions into Dwemer ruins that we've seen. Sure enough, got a big old pool of blood here. Looks like we had a nice campfire. We were drinking, we were playing the lute, maybe singing. Then something went wrong. Let's descend. Let's follow the trail of blood. Let's see what it was. Jadar and Jazar were Khajiit brothers, part of the expedition. And we just overheard Jadar. Let's keep descending. We're still seeing a nice merge between Glacier and uh, Dwarven architecture here. Now this is kind of interesting. So we head over here, we see another bedroll, more blood, a gate that we can't open. Full set of the Dwemer Inquiries. Or, not a full set, we got Dwemer Inquiries and Dwarves, both of which we've already read. Got an unlocked chest, which is always nice to find. And we have Research Notes, which we can read and take off the list. If only Umani would have left one of these dwarven machine creatures intact for me to study. The fact that they almost killed those Khajiit brothers in the middle of the night doesn't mean we couldn't have found a way to disable one. We dragged some stuff in front of the pipes they came out of to stop them from coming back. They are simply fascinating. It is just as Kalsamo described in Dwarves V2. Their appearance does in fact resemble that of an arachnid. I had thought that to be an embellishment given by his source. The inclusion of the soul gem into the design of the apparatus is quite remarkable. It could explain the focus for the lightning that he describes. Oddly enough, it doesn't appear to be the main power source for the apparatus. Perhaps some sort of harmonic resonance with the energies contained in the soul gem to bring heat to a small boiler? Too early to say conclusively. That does raise the question of where they get the liquid for the boiler, however. Huh, that was strange. I thought I just saw something moving beyond the barred door. It looked vaguely humanoid. I wonder if it could be an undiscovered automaton? I'm going to move my bedroll down here to see if I can catch another glimpse of it. This is all so exciting. Mm-hmm. Well, unfortunately, we all know what it probably was, don't we? So you can see where they piled up stuff. And if we clear the way, suddenly... Sure enough, another spider pops out. Not a big deal. Very easy to handle. We got a still burning torch on the ground. Can see another spider up here. Just chilling. Strangely enough. 
bag that one. And just keep running. Dead end to the right. Another lit torch here to the left. Spider's been taken out. We can advance or we can go down. Let's stay on this level for now. We got a chest, coin purse, and some gold. More blood, but do note that this is the spot where we overheard Jadar. We never saw him. We were able to hear him in there. Let's continue advancing. I love Aura Whisper. So now we've got torches leading down. And here's a, here's a live Khajiit. So unfortunately, Jadar attacks us, and we find that he has already killed his brother Jazar. And now we already know we're down to looking for five people instead of seven. Here's Jazar's pack, empty skooma bottles, and here's Jazar's journal, which we can read and take off our book list. This one is at his wit's end. I signed Jujar and myself up for this expedition to try to get him clean of the skooma. I brought a small supply to try bring him down slowly, but the storm has had us trapped in the glacier for weeks. The others have not yet caught on that one with fur should not shake so much from the cold, but I've run out of the little skooma I bought, brought and Jadar is getting pretty bad. He started hallucinating creatures coming out of the ice and the ruins. The others are starting to think he may be behind Veili's disappearance, but I know he would never do something like that. Well, until he gets desperate enough, as you seem to have found out the hard way, poor fellow. Anyway, another coin purse. Now we're down to five. And we seem to be more or less clear of the glacier and into the ruins proper now, which is always fun. We'll just take the bolts off of these guys. I will elect to otherwise not care. We head over here, we can get up to the balcony by riding these pistons. Yeah, if you didn't know you were signing up for a crude, terrible first-person platformer, all I can say is, neither did I. And I like it about as well as I imagine you do. But it's worth coming up here. There's some goodies and a chest that you can find that are otherwise hidden. And we can just keep on marching. Alright. We got spider and spider. That's it for this room. Let's keep the search going. Alright, so we've got a door, which looks like the way forward via Aura Whisper. And sure enough, a novice locked gate with a little treasure trove behind it. So let's see what we can find. An adept locked chest? Of course. And an apprentice locked chest right next to it. Delightful. Alright, let's keep going. All right, pressure plate, so let's just step around it, search the chest. Down here to the right, we got a spider. He was guarding an adept locked chest. 
So let's nab that. Good stuff. Nothing I need, but good stuff. There's another spider. Another collapsed tunnel to the right. Nothing there. To the left, we have a little... What I've come to recognize is probably a bedroom with a couple of potions in it. Onward again. Dead end to the left. To the right. We've got an apprentice locked door, which I think leads to another bedroom with a sphere in it. Just waiting. I only fragged him pretty good. Let's search his chest. Cool. Now let's move on. Up the stairs. To the right, another spider. Now we're clear for a while. Looks like we got two more spiders coming up. More platforming! Yay! Bet you didn't know you were signing up for that. And of course, once you get about halfway across the pistons, a spider pops out behind you. I want to go back and search him. Just in case. It looks like another one did come out ahead of us. Well, let's just hop the pistons and search him as well. And now we can keep going. Goody! We're up above that room we came through down on the lower level. And we have reached the second zone, the Alftand Animunculori. Let's cut left. Falmer shield. Well, we all, I'm sure we all knew what was coming. As soon as we read those journals. <laughs> that and the simple fact that we're exploring a Dwemer ruin really ought to make it clear in both instances. But nonetheless, we can go forward here see there is a spider there so we'll want to deal with it and it looks like we got some obvious that passage down there is fairly obvious but I want to make sure we handle everything up here first so we got spider we got a sphere, and now we're starting to see Charis eggs in the other typical paraphernalia. But let's drop down under here now where we find an adept locked chest. An unfortunate corpse, Endrast, his journal. Well, I want the lock picks first. And Endrast's journal, which we can read and take off the list. Well, now we're down to four. Four members of the expedition. And I think I even remember their names. Veili, Yag, Sulla, and Umani. The eyeless creatures took us in our sleep. I don't know what happened to the Khajiit brothers. We never saw them in the cell. I managed to pick the lock, and we made a break for it, but got split up. Sulla yelled something about not leaving without finding what he came here for, and Umana chased after him. Yag and I tried for the top of the cave shaft, but one of the ramps was broken. Without a hesitation, she grabbed me by the scruff of my tunic, threw me atop the ledge, and told me to run. And I did. I didn't even look back. I just ran like a coward. 
I could hear her fighting them, and I just had to get away. I didn't even notice the arrow in my shoulder till I hid here. These, those metal creatures are still all around me, and I'm too terrified to even move. Eight divines, please just take me now. All right, so, Ellen, look. In a nice bit of continuity, there's even an arrow in his shoulder. All right. So I guess Veili disappeared before anyone else. And then Yag, Endrast, Sulla, and Umana were captured and escaped together. So we're looking for the other four. Just avoid the pressure plates. Obvious trap is obvious. We have a spider here. Not sure how to convince it to come out. Oh. Probably hit the lever to open the gate. What do you think? Huh. No. Well, I hate leaving shit alive. Let's do this. All right. Still just constructs so far. Spoiler alert, that will change fairly soon. Don't miss the buried, novice-locked chest back here. Not that there's anything terribly important inside. Really? We got a spider in there. How does that even work? I don't know, but I'm bringing his ass out, I'll tell you that. I'll search him later. Or not at all. I don't particularly care either way. So we're seeing Falmer architecture, but... None of the actual bastard elves yet. Apprentice locked door. Spider inside, and this room is apparently otherwise clear. Well, we got a chest. Nothing too important inside. How about back here? Nope. Empty, empty, empty. How about here? Expert locked gate. Well, let's spring that. Master locked chest with a copy of the skill book, The Locked Room. Spell Tome Flames. Come on. At least give me a good spell tome. Jeez. Alright. Well, no obvious way forward until we look down and remember what Endrast's journal said. And we see the corpse of an orc down here. Yag Gragortwog. Well, we see, unfortunately, what happened to her. After she willingly sacrificed herself to try and save Endrast. So we take our dive. We head up here to open a chest. I just grabbed something I didn't want. A garnet and deal with one more spider who doesn't want to come out on his own. We'll search him. And then we'll make our way down, noticing that there is a Falmer there. It finally begins. And it's a serious Falmer, a warmonger archer. Oh, come on. There we go. Can't 
can't see anything besides the red dot yet, but he, there he is. He's more or less just underneath me. So we've got these piston traps that are going to try and catch us, us, catch us off guard and send us over the ledge. Here we got another warmonger archer. Let's handle him. Let's hit this tripwire. Just so it's done. And let's make our way down. Here's another, here's a dead gloom lurker. That's weird. I think that one must have been on patrol and fell. There's a dead skeever. We got some arrows here, which suggests the Falmer were chasing the escapees. And in at least some cases, the escapees did all right for themselves. Got a dead Falmer here, after all. Gold, arrows, very nice. I want to make sure I didn't leave anything alive above me in there before I proceed. Let's just keep our eyes peeled. Bagged one there. Got a warmonger here. Usual stuff on the shelves, nothing to worry too much about. Over here there's an alchemy lab, of all things. Got gold and arrows on this guy. Naturally we're going to take them. Looks like this might be where the escape was made, or where the cell was. Hard to say for sure, but it's pretty cool. No matter how you look at it. Alright, good. So I count three, four, five, six Falmer left that I can see anywhere. That's pretty good. Maybe we're maybe we're just about clear then. Let's bag this one. Five. Four. Three. They're all archers, too. It's really playing to mess with you if you're not being careful. Keep your eyes peeled for goodies. We got a whole bunch of mushrooms that the Falmer are actually cleverly cooking right here. How intriguing. Alright, looks like three more. Let's drop a quick save. Seems like a good spot for it after all. Oh, and now I see four more down lower. What do we got up here? A lot of nothing, which I guess is fine. Got an elevator here on the right. One wonders where that goes. Two, one. Zero. Well, no. There's still one left nearby. Whole bunch of alchemy stuff. And some very human-like gear, which they must have taken off of captives. There's the other one. Reasonably safe from combat for now. In fact, here's a Falmer that died without me killing it, so... That way is the pretty obvious way forward, so let's check inside the tents. Let's check over here. Ah, uh, this must be the cell they escaped from. Here is Veili. The first one who disappeared before they got the others, apparently. 
Well, now we're only looking for two. Sulla and Numana. Everyone else is dead. So this goes back up to the Alftand Glacial Ruins, the first zone. Let's just take a quick look. See what we can see. Other than some Charis eggs, all we're really able to do is open the old barred door and a shortcut to the exit. And actually, your only route to the exit, if you've uh, jumped down the ledge where Yag's corpse was. But that's all good. We made it back. Let's go deeper. It's always the answer. I'll drop another quick save before I head through here. Oh, we're back in the big central shaft. We got a warmonger there. One quite quick enough to get him without letting him move. There he is. Here comes another. There's a spider. Well, that's just easy. And we got a gloom lurker. Also easy. Now it looks like this place is clear. Oh, uh -oh. we're at the bottom, so we can look for everything that fell that we weren't able to search. So I recall that should just be this one, Fulmer, the spider, and one dwarven spider that fell from way up high, if I can track it down. I'll be pretty pleased with myself. Well, no dice on that, apparently. But that's okay. Oh, shit! Just kidding, there it is. Awesome. Didn't have anything anyway, but damn it if I didn't find it. All right. So here we are. Let's move on. Deeper and deeper. Another trap here. Probably for people who are eager to cross into Zone 3 and aren't paying attention. Here is the Alftand Cathedral. Exciting stuff, let me tell you. We're deep. Very, very deep. Try to remember Septimus's dialogue, right, about Alftand being the point of puncture. Our need to get to a place called Blackreach. I absolutely love Blackreach. Even after all the expansions, it's my favorite thing in the entire game. Just, I mean, it took my breath away the first time I saw it. And it kind of still does. And this will be the first time I've seen it on a computer this good. So look at this big open-air cavern we've found. We've got plenty of Falmer. Always need to be careful of that. Oh, goodness. Oh, come on now. At some point it just gets silly. I see three more living things, and I think that's it. The rest are inside a gate that we'll need to open, so we're safe for the moment. So if you look over here, there's really nothing. If you go to the left, we got a couple of Falmer huts. We'll stick our heads in. There's a chest. 
Otherwise, we're good. Come up here, there's another chest. And a lever. Which will open the gate and allow us in. Now note, we haven't seen these grasses or these kinds of mushrooms before. That's certainly interesting. Let me see, we have a chest over here. Lots of shit in it, damn. Got another one tucked over back here. Let me try the other side. Oddly glowing rocks. There's one of the three. And with that awesome sneak attack, we have cleared Alftand, so we can take it off of our clearable locations list. Let me very quickly confirm that. Yes. Key to Alftand lift. Hell, <laughs> oh, don't mind if I do. Looks like somebody else killed another centurion. Let's drop a quick save and see what's happening up here. Well, before we open that gate, let's make sure there's nothing going on to either side. Looks like we're going to see there are two humans over there. That would be the final two members of our ill-fated expedition, Sulla and Umana. There is an apprentice locked chest hiding over here. Good, that only took half an hour. We will not come anywhere near to getting all the way through Blackreach, but we'll be able to do some initial exploration, which pleases me. All right, let's open the gate. you want me to leave just waiting for me to turn my back so you can have all the glory for yourself let's check the boss chest while they chat Time to end. now they fight each other but unfortunately even though Yamana seems reasonable she starts hostile to us too so we have to kill them both there's Sulla Trabadius and here is Umana who actually has an artifact, the Targe of the Blooded, which I will take off the unique items list. And it's pretty cool. When bashing, does three points of bleeding damage for five seconds. So we'll take that. There's the key to the Alf 10 lift. If we do this, we can open up the top level tower, the exit, like we're usually able to do. Just like that. So here we are back at Alftand. Uh, let's head back in. Let's head back down to the cathedral. And let's prepare to see Blackreach. Here is where our quest marker has been directing us to use the attunement spear since we first visited Septimus. So now we've, uh, we're done using it, but it actually never gets unmarked as a quest item. And if we open this door, we will arrive in Blackreach. Let's do it. Let's finally do it. We've seen the other two entrances. They're through Mazinchaleft and Raldbathar. This is Blackreach. An absolutely massive underground cavern that connects the three big dwarven ruins of Skyrim and, most importantly, contains the only initially accessible entrance to the Tower of Mazark, where the Elder Scroll we're looking for is housed. Just, just look at that. Ugh. Love this place. 
So you walk down here and and there's a road. This place is big enough to have a friggin' road. So one thing to be aware of, and keep your eyes peeled for. Oh shit, that's a live sphere. Wasn't paying attention. And this will be much easier since we do have the gardener perk. The Crimson Nurn Root, which grows only in Blackreach. Let's grab one. Started a return to your roots. Discover the significance of Crimson Nurn Root. And so, oh, see, gardener doesn't work. You can only harvest one. Well, this first one I'm going to eat to discover the four effects. Damage health, damage stamina, invisibility, and resist magic. Spoiler alert, they're the same effects as regular Nurn Root. But, with all four of those done, I can take Crimson Nurn Root off of my ingredient list, which is kind of cool. You should take Astrid's advice, by the way, and not eat the Jaren Root. There's an Ebony Ore Vein here. Oh yeah, and let's look at a Return to Your Roots. I've discovered an unusual ingredient called Crimson Nurn Root. And we're being directed to this little building. Cinderian's Field Laboratory. Oh my goodness. Who played Oblivion? Who remembers the epic Nurn Root hunt seeking your roots? And the alchemist from Skingrad by the name of Cinderian, who was really the guy you were working for on that quest. Let me do a perimeter check on this building. Looks like there's nothing there. There's a Falmer Warmonger up there, though. Oh, we certainly don't want that. So let's deal with him. I'll just take his gold. Or otherwise, fine. So there you go. You got a, uh, basically you're waterlogged if you go right. So let's just, rather than allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by the cavern, let's just open Cinderian's Field Laboratory. Blackreach is so big, the game actually reads it as an exterior zone. Your storm call shout and other stuff will actually work in there. So, I guess we know what became of poor Cinderian. Here's his skeleton with a few Falmer arrows in it. But, we can pick up Cinderian's Field Journal, and we can read it. Take it off the book list, and we'll know, and that'll also advance this new quest. So there is Cinderian's Field Journal. Completed. Discover the significance of Crimson Nurn Root. Collect Crimson Nurn Root in Blackreach, minus one out of 30. It's grumpy that I consumed one, I guess. Cinderian's Field Journal. That won't matter, though. I think they're, they're like 36, so there are a few spares, so we'll be fine. Cinderian's Field Journal. 4E58, Second Seed, Midas. I've spent a large portion of my life unraveling the mystery of the Nurn Root, and yet I still feel unfulfilled. The trilling sound this strange herb emits seems to taunt me, to push me even harder to discover its secrets. Even after a generous and indomitable traveler became a field collector in my stead, and provided me with five score of the Nurn Root, 100, the exact number you needed for seeking your roots in oblivion, I was only able to muster what I consider a mediocre alchemical creation at best. This only served to strengthen my hunger and whet my appetite for the solution. It wasn't until over 50 years later that the answer to my prayers was carried into my basement workshop at the West Wheeled Inn. The first thing I heard was the familiar tone, that unmistakable warble unique to the Nurn Root. But when I turned around, my heart leapt and a chill ran down my spine. This was indeed a Nurn Root, but of a variety the likes of which I have never seen. The herb was awash in a spectacular array of red hues, each leaf seemingly emblazoned with innumerable variations of crimson. I couldn't move. I was completely transfixed. Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined a species of Nurn Root with such a unique property. 
After an awkward silence, I finally managed to stammer out a few questions to the traveler who'd brought me this treasure. He told me his name was Obeth Arnesian, a treasure seeker from Skyrim. Apparently he'd been exploring a vast subterranean network of grand caverns called Blackreach, and had stumbled across what he dismissed as a noisy red weed. His expedition was largely unsuccessful, and he didn't want to leave the caves empty-handed, so Obeth picked one of the Crimson Nern root to bring home. He said that it took some time, but eventually he was pointed my way, and that perhaps I'd pay a fair price for it. Before I could gather my wits and ask anything else, Obeth offered to sell me the Crimson Nernroot sample, a map showing me how to find Blackreach, and the strange key needed to breach its outer defenses. It took me mere moments to decide. Obeth left Skingrad a thousand septims richer, but I would have easily paid ten times that amount to obtain the sample alone. It took a year of planning, but I was able to pack up and sell my workshop and make my way into Skyrim. Before delving headfirst into Blackreach, I knew I needed to set up a new laboratory, but wished to do so in seclusion. After making inquiries at the College of Winterhold, of which I was an honorary member, I was directed to speak to Avrusa Serethi, a student of botanical alchemy who had a small farm near the city of Riften. By bartering my knowledge of Nernroot cultivation, I was able to secure Serethi Farm as a launching point for my field research. I kept the knowledge of the Crimson Nernroot a secret from Avrusa, but imparted everything else I knew to her in exchange for her hospitality. A few months passed, but I was finally ready to enter Blackreach. I used the ruined lexicon that Obeth had provided and descended into the depths. My goal was to gather enough crimson nernroot to produce my greatest alchemical creation to date. I was certain it would take at least 30 of them to provide the necessary catalyst. This brings me to the present. My initial research seems to indicate that the Crimson Nernroot has a similar affinity for moisture as the garden variety, but also maintains some sort of symbiotic relationship with the enormous fungi that inhabits Blackreach. It's my guess that the fungi itself is a source of water, absorbing it from the moist subterranean air like a sponge. This provides the ideal environment for the Nernroot to grow. Unfortunately, the Crimson Nernroot appears to have a vastly shortened lifespan, and they are in no way plentiful down here. Gathering 30 of them will be quite the challenge, but hopefully the denizens of Blackreach will allow me to gather my samples unhindered. Alas, we see how that works. It's a quest item, so we need to keep it with us. That's fine. Uh, it looks like he actually got killed by uh, automatons, not Falmer. Maybe the, maybe the very sphere we saw parked outside. Alas. Ah, oh, leather boots of hauling. Not bad. I think those are actually a guaranteed find here. The magnitude may be leveled. Oh look, it's an attunement sphere. So he got in the same way we did. Nice bit of continuity there, Bethesda. Alright, we got a bunch of ingredients that I don't care about. An alchemy skill book, Dererum Direnes. Bunch more ingredients that I don't care about, and one Crimson Nernroot in a planter. Zero out of thirty. So apparently we, uh, you can't be consuming these, or it'll fuck up your counter for the quest. It's good to know. Alright, now before we delve too deeply into anything else, you can see something neat looking over here. Let me eliminate this Falmer who apparently wants to make trouble. Rather stupidly, if you ask me. And if we jump down here where he came from, we find a fucking Charis Hunter that I was in no way prepared for. God damn it, Travis, you gotta pay attention. Drop an Aura Whisper. Why haven't you done that yet? Because now it's pointless. Oh well. Let's grab that. Let's grab a Crimson Nern Root. We need to find 29 more. Now, before we really delve any farther, you see this tower here. Blackreach becomes a pretty cool way around Skyrim, especially if you're playing a no fast travel game, and I'll show you why in just a moment. There's another Crimson Nern Root. We need 28 more. Over here, there's yet another. We need 27 more. And if you come over here and you hit this button, 
you can lower the bars and ride an elevator up to the surface. And you'll discover something new here. One of three great lifts that you can use really to fast travel directly into Blackreach without having to go through any of the dungeons, which is kind of cool. I'm running near the end of my hour, allotted hour, so we'll discover the great lift at Alftand, which we can take off the list. That's awesome. We can flip the lever to open the gate. And just to show you where we actually are, we've spotted this tower before. We're around, we're in, on that ridge up to the northeast of the night gate in. See, there's the little pond. Here's everything we've seen. So now that I have the option, I'm going to make a quick trip to Winstead just to drop off. I think the one thing I did pick up that I'm keeping is the Targe of the Blooded. Let's just bounce into here. I trust you're not planning any trouble. What can I do for you, friend? Papa, did you bring me anything? Not this time. Aww. All right, let's visit Shavi for dollar dollar bills. Oh, it's, the gold is flowing nicely. Here's your let's drop off the targe. What else am I carrying? Oh, all this Nern root. Duh. Okay. Think we're good. Think we're good. Let's check the girl's dresser while we're here. Just in case there's a new book. There's not. Alright, let's fast travel back to the Great Lift at Alftand. I have about 10 minutes ish till I hit the one hour mark. I'll play a little bit more. My Black Reach has several side areas. There are a few interior cells that are fully independent of each other. There's a big group of locations called uh, Oh shoot, what is it? The Something City. I forget what the city's called off the top of my head, but we'll get there. There are the three entrances, which we explored each of the three ruins up to the door, so we don't need to mess with any of that. There are the three great lifts. There's another great lift of Mazincha left and another of uh, Ralbathar, which we'll find while we're down here. And there's the entrance to the Tower of Mazark, which is where we ultimately do need to go for the Elder Knowledge quest. And there's two dead Falmer. I carefully head over here. I see a Charis Hunter and a Centurion. I'd like to bag the Hunter before anything else gets alerted that's a possibility. And let's bag the Centurion too. Why not? So you can actually, uh, okay, I think we're clear for now. I'll just show this to you. Here at the base of the Centurion is a Crimson Nern Root. I need 26 more. He also has a chest. There he is. Let's search him. Let's search the Charis. Okay. 
duck around back here, you can see a Falmer hut, but it's empty. You can see this structure over here where we had killed a couple more Falmer. We'll wander over there next. Then I suppose I should fight these two first. Where are you, buddy? I see you. There he is. It's an archer. No problem. Oh, damn it. What the fuck was that? I don't know, but it was pretty funny. Anyway, we got him. No problem. We'll search him. Gold and arrows. Nip down here for another Crimson Nern Root. We need 25 more. See a bridge over here. Leading to another Nern Root. 24. There's the Wisp Mother. Let's attack her directly. Oh my gosh, really? Well, I thought it'd be a good idea to attack her directly, but it didn't work out that way. No need to search the Wisp cores. Let's do check on her right quick. Now there's something else down here that only shows up in Black Reach. I'll show this to you. I'll even mine one. Haven't done this in ages, but get out your pickaxe. Because Black Reach has geode veins, which you can actually mine for empty soul gems. You can see I got a black, a greater, and a petty from mining that one out, which is pretty crazy, pretty awesome, if you ask me. All right. Bow. There it is. Anyway, I don't want to get too distracted from the route I have planned, but this central area that we're in right here where the Wisp Mother was, we can go ahead and explore it right quick. We head over here. Find another Falmer village where there is a Falmer and a Charis Hunter. I will deal with both of them. I'll ignore those spiders and shit for now. That's a whole discreet area we'll get to later. If we kind of arc past it, you should be able to piece together that we're actually kind of circling back to where we came in. There's another Crimson Nern route. 23 more needed. Don't worry about that later. I see... Charis cocoons over here. It's about to say I'm actually unclear if any of them will pop, but it looks like two of them will. And they aren't doing it via the usual proximity trigger, so... Let's just encourage them a bit, shall we? Oh, good God. No, 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 no. You do not get to run away. Shit. Alright, let's search that one. Let's get this one out. So we can deal with him as well. Don't give me a false kill cam. Those are the worst. Alrighty. I think it might be the sunken city. Still not exactly sure, but anyway. 
There's a Crimson Nern root. We need 22 more. And now you can see we're back to places we've already been. So let's just circle up here right quick. I see a couple more Charis Hunters up there. Let's not miss this Crimson Nern root, which is staring us in the face. We need 21 more. Or this one, for that matter. We need 20 more. Getting there, getting there. As we head up here, we get close. I should go into sneak mode. I know there are two hunters live up here. There's one. There's the other. 19 more Nern, Crimson Nern Root. That's the first hunter I killed. Huh, they were prematurely out of their cocoons, it seems. 18 more. There he is. Didn't help anything. That's all right. I'll probably just have to do the full loop back. That's fine. It won't hurt anything. We're at the one hour mark, and I kind of want to end, but I just want to close off this little loop. So let's swim across this, mostly because I spotted that other uh, Nern root over here. Let's snag this one. Need 17 more. And here we are. Back where we left off. So now... Ooh, there you go. More stuff rendered. Sunken City, is that right? I don't know. I feel like it had a cooler name than that, but I could be wrong. So this was kind of where we wandered off the road we were following. Let's get back on, because you can see it forks here. Beyond that uh, bridge that we took. And you can kind of veer off past it, so let's explore the arch. Almost looks like a guard tower that those Falmer were in. Let's see what's up here. Looks like a geode vein and an otherwise unremarkable path back down to the road. That's good. What about back here? We killed a few Falmer at this building too, and we actually even cut past a fork in the road. And I meant to show you something way back here after I initially got distracted by the arrival of extra Falmer, I almost forgot. but. The Centurion won't attack you. You can hit this lever to turn it on. And obviously if you do that, he'll help you out against the Falmer and other nasties that are living in here. Anyway, you can see this is a full extra area of the cavern that I'm not too keen on running off into just yet, at least not without a system. You know what I mean. But there is an urn root over here. Need 16 more. I'm really just trying to do a perimeter check on this building, because I've already explored that ledge up there. There's a Shadow Master that I killed. Very good. And at any rate, now we can actually head up into the building and explore it. Here's another Falmer I killed. We got gold and the arrow I killed it with. And we got a boss chest. Gold, two spell tomes, Clairvoyance and Courage. Too bad I know both of those spells, but that's still a pretty good find. And with that, I'm going to end this video.
right here at this juncture it's a pretty good spot and actually just because I already covered this area I'm gonna roll over to here this is where we're headed next in our epic journey into Blackreach but for now we are done this has been Let's Play Skyrim. We cleared out Alftand, and we are now exploring the massive chasm that is Blackreach, hunting for Crimson Nernroot, and trying to find our way to the Tower of Mazark, which we'll hopefully accomplish next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos, please consider clicking an ad, liking, sharing, or subscribing, any or all of which really help me out. But regardless, please know that I really do appreciate the time you spend watching, and hope you have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.